Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. So today we're gonna do a challenge that is really fun. We're gonna learn how to make the 100 envelope challenge. Now if you guys don't know what that is, basically it's 100 envelopes that you will have and you cut them up and then it basically you can save up to $5,050. So here is 100 envelopes that I made, but I'm gonna share with you guys what you need to make this. So the first thing that you can use that is optional is a clear box like this. I got this at Walmart. Um, I do know that um, Amazon has these, but they're a little bit pricey, but I will put a link down below of all the product that I use so you guys can look for that stuff too. But here you want just a regular three by five index box. You can use any kind of box that you want. I just like it that it's clear. You will also need a pair of scissors if you want. So you got some scissors. You will need a laminator along with some laminate sheets. Today we are using the Scotch brand. You will need a trimmer if you feel like you use it. I like the trimmer. I feel like it's um, a lot easier to cut. This is a Cricut brand. You can use any kind of trimmer. This is just what I have at the house. And the next thing that you guys need is paper. So I got this paper at Walmart. We got a fairy tale or we got marble. But uh, what we're going to do is start pulling the sheets out, and then I'm going to share with you guys what you need. Now, for the sheets, you will need a 12 by 12 sheet of paper. You can get away with the other sizes, but this one you get uh, less work to do. So you are going to need 13 pages to choose from. So you just pick 13 designs. I'm making a ton of these, so I'm going to cut out every single piece of paper. But you will need 13 pieces of paper. And you will need 17 sheets of the thermal uh, laminating pouches. So there is two different types of scrapbook paper that you can use. With this one, this is just like regular everyday paper. It's a little bit thinner. It's a little bit flimsier. One thing I do like about this is this is a whole lot easier to cut and you can cut multiple pages at a time. Then we have this one little, little bit of cardstock. So the cardstock is just basically a little bit of a um, tougher paper. One thing I don't like about the Walmart brand of paper that I get is it has this dotted line right here. So I actually have to cut that out uh, before I even get started. So I'm going to start pulling every single page out of this and then we're going to get to cutting. Okay, so what I did is I ended up trimming all the uh, dotted line pieces. So what you're going to do, depending on the thick of your paper, uh, you can grab a bunch and we're just going to cut it down. If you do have the cardstock, I usually say cut two or three sheets here. I probably have maybe four to five. It all varies. You can also do one at a time. It's however you want to do it. So what you're going to do is you're going to go through your little trimmer. And what I do is I go exactly to six inches okay so you're going to basically cut the 12 by 12 sheet of paper in half so right there then what you're going to do is you're going to cut each of these the width of three inches so you're just going to go to the three inch mark and voila so this is what you're going to basically just do is just continue cutting them all the way to three inches and there you go you get your first clump this is I don't even know how many this is but like I said you need 13 sheets of paper if you plan on doing a set of 100 so I'm going to continue doing this and then I'll show you what to do next So here I have all 50 sheets cut up. There's about 400 pieces of paper right here. So what I'm going to start doing is I fold them. Now I have found it easier to have like a surface with an edge. I usually have been using a tote cover. But what I do is I actually just kind of rub it up to the edge like this. And then you want to start folding them in half. Now the tricky part is you got to kind of have them evenly cut but then you're just going to kind of fold them right into like little pockets right there so again like I said I just kind of like to bump it up because then it's easier for me to fold it and do this so we're just going to continue folding it until they are all folded up okay so here are the 100 envelopes all cut and folded ready to go 
The next thing you're gonna do is start your laminating machine. I find it easier to laminate with the five mil setting on than the three mil because the three mil is made for just a normal piece of paper, but since we are folding this, that is a little bit thicker than normal. So the next thing you're gonna do is take your laminating sheet and you're gonna open it up. Now I always take the folded part and I wedge it up as close as I can to the one part of the laminating sheet. And you're gonna do it just like that. Now I've been trying and trying to get more of the pieces of paper on here that I can, but I can only fit six on at a, as a, at a time. So basically, and you wanna make sure that there's like no hair or anything in here. My cat's hair sometimes gets in here. But uh, basically this is what you're gonna do. And then my thing kinda came out a little bit, so then I just open it up. And the more I've made these, the faster I've gotten at it. So, yeah, there's like a cat hair in here. Okay, so basically, that's what it is. So what I end up doing is I just make a bunch of these all at the same time while my laminating machine is warming up because sometimes I my machine goes a little bit faster sometimes than what I can do with these. So I just like it that I can get a bunch of them all ready to go and then I just stick them right through the laminating machine. So we're just going to continue doing this until I have them all filled up. I have my laminating machine on, the light is green ready to go. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the folded part of the laminated sheet in and you're just going to let it just go right in and then it'll soon just kind of guide itself. Now one thing I've noticed, the first time, the first item that I do put in the laminating machine, it doesn't always like laminate straight or there's bubbles in it so sometimes I do have to run it over but it just depends on how long the machine's been waiting to be used. But this is what takes the longest. I use, I actually have two laminated machines and I do two of them at the same time. But as you can see, it's actually looking pretty good. So I'm just gonna continue letting this go through and then I'll put a little bit more through in a little bit. Okay, so this is almost done right about here. Um, and then, like I said, I always try to keep the hinge part or the folded part on one side of the thing and I will show you the reason why I do it that way but again make sure your light is green before you feed it through again and we're going to continue doing this all the way through the other sheets. Okay, so I got two sheets right here. I can cut up to three or four, but I find it the easiest to cut through the two sheets. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start cutting these in pieces. So while I'm having this laminate itself, I'm gonna cut this right in half, just like this. So then what I do is after I got them in half, then I'm just gonna kinda just cut it just like this, but I pay attention to where the bottom is at all times because when I trim this, it goes along a lot faster, not trying to figure out where the bottom of the folded half of the laminated sheet is. So we're just gonna continue going in. And how I know is because I put that one so close to the edge, it just makes it easier to figure out where the bottoms are. So we're just gonna keep on cutting these and laminating the sheets. Okay, so here we got this part right here. What you're gonna do is you're gonna pay attention to the part that you have folded, and we're actually gonna cut the top to the very closest to edge of the paper. So you're gonna go like that, got enough room to open it up. Now, with what I have with my, with my trimmer is, I go all the way until the, since my trimmer is clear, I actually go until the edge is like right even with this plastic part because you do not want to cut it um, too close to the edge, otherwise it will not uh, glue. Now, what I've noticed with these ones, these are a little bit thinner. I don't ever have to really worry about the edge, but the ones with the thicker cardstock paper, um, I do notice that there are holes on the sides every once in a while, and I just run this little thing right through my laminator again, and it laminates it. Now, you do want to make sure you got it, you know, you could just leave it the way it is. I kind of just make mine a little bit thinner. I didn't have to, but we're just going to continue trimming each and every single one of these you know make sure you have your little envelope opener right there now there are times where I accidentally have cut one of the sides open and if you do that it's not a big deal you just have it where it's the the thing is just like the opposite but uh, pretty easy here's the bottom 
super fast and the more you make these the faster you can go so I always have mine like in my little box right here I got chocolate on it but I always just make sure I have the bottom facing so when I pull it right out I know where the bottom is at all times and you can kind of feel that there's a little bump so I'm going to continue cutting these and we'll be back Okay, so here it is. Here is the box. I just cut this out with my Kriga machine. It is optional how, however you want to do it. But here they are, all 100 cards. And then what I also made um, on the computer is I made these little envelopes um, that say 1 through 100 so you can check them off as you go. And then I also bought some stickers. but I also made stickers, but these ones work a lot better than the ones I made. But they are 1 through 100, so basically what you do is when you get all your money, you would put a number on here. So like this would be number one. So you'd put a $1 bill in that uh, envelope. Then you grab another one. It's all random. If you have a $73, you'd put the $73 sticker on here. But again, this all adds up to be $5,550 for the 100 envelope challenge. Um, it is a lot of work, but I love, fi I love making these. And if you guys are interested, I do have these for sale in my Etsy page. I do have the link below. But uh, I will also have the link for everything that I have of these items that I bought so you guys can check it out yourself. Thanks for watching. Give this video a big thumbs up. And I will thank you guys for watching. And see you guys all later. Bye-bye.